They're adorable, require no stamina, items, pickaxes, bug nets, cold drinks, hot drinks, trank bombs, rare drops, and zenny. They can cut tails, stun, exhaust, mount. They're as powerful as a hunter and my main weapon for Monster Hunter Generations. Welcome to my guide on the Prowler. Okay, like all the other weapons, understanding your basic moves and how they move together is essential to learning how to play the weapon, or I can say the Prowler right. So let's take a look at all the different moves that a Prowler can do. Okay, your draw attack, or if you're holding forward on the circle pad and you press X, is this nice jump in slash. 14 motion and that 8 in the parentheses is how much it contributes towards your gauge of getting another unit towards activating a skill, which is really important. The X idle is actually weaker, it's 10 motion and 5 units, so I definitely prefer to use forward input on the circle pad if you're going to be initiating an attack on the ground like this. With the Prowler you can do up to 3 evades in a row, sort of like Lance. So after you do an attack, or if you just jump, you can do 3 different evades left to right, or you can mix in forward evades with it as well, not back steps. This comes in handy very much so because none of your evades have any invincibility frames. So being able to take advantage of your mid distance to long distance and to get out of the way before you get hit is really crucial to high level play. Now one of the cool main features of the Prowler throws a lot of people off at first. This is your walking speed, it's pretty fast, but if you do an invasion after an attack, you'll go into a sprint with your weapon out. So if you notice here, I'm now doing running speed with my weapon out, and then you can go and initiate attacks from there. So a lot of people do an attack, quick evade out of the way, and go, whoa, 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 why is my cat running? Well, that's part of the feature of the weapon, so make sure you understand that if you need to chase something down, do an attack first, evade out of it, or just do an evade, and you'll be able to go into a run. It's really cool. Okay, back to the moves. If you press X after your first attack, you'll do this second left hand slash. It's 14 motion and 5 units towards a skill point. And if you press X a third time, you'll do this rising downward slash. It's really good. Check out the height on this move. Boom. So this is really good for hitting monsters' heads like Xenogres or anything that holds its head higher than the ground level. Now, if you hold R, you can guard. And from the guard, if you press X, you can do right into this move. So a lot of people will prefer to do this because it keeps you in place and you hit pretty high. The fourth hit of the combo here is this upward slash. It's not that powerful, 18 motion and 10 units, um, but it does take quite a long time to do. And now we can finish off the five hit combo by pressing X one more time. So one, two, three, four, and the wheel. So this does 12 motion, 8 units towards a skill point, times the number times you hit a monster. This is very good for doing status or elemental damage because of the amount of hits that you can do. And if you hold forward like I just did, you can get a little forward movement on the wheel spin as well. You can go in from R and X to that third hit and go straight into the combo much faster than normal. So I definitely recommend that you do this instead of always going for the 5 hit combo because that takes a lot of time. Yeah, so just look at how fast this is. Boom, boom, and the spin. So if you see an opportunity, definitely use this shorter version if you don't know if you have enough time. Okay, moving on to our next moves. If you press the A button, you'll throw a boomerang. It's worth only 8 motion and 6 units towards a point, um, but you can throw 2 in a row. Just hit A after the first one is airborne, and you'll throw a second one. Cool move here, if you press X after you throw a boomerang or two, you'll do this forward lunge. This is very powerful, 20 motion and 16 units towards a skill point. So this is really good for sort of early battle when you're trying to get your skill points to activate your boomerangs. Very good. Now one thing you'll notice is that you can combo off these things as well. So charging forward I think is great for repositioning and doing a lot of damage. Okay, with the boomerang, if you hold down A, you can charge your boomerang. This will charge up a lot faster if you have the skill Boomerang Pro. So I definitely recommend that you scout a cat that has it. This only does one extra motion and one extra unit towards, so it's not that much more powerful than a regular boomerang, but it does get much, much powerful scaling once you do Pierce Boomerangs and Big Boomerang, which I'll cover in just a little bit. It also lets you reposition. Look at here, I can go all the way behind myself with input on my prad, and I can shoot the boomerang in any direction I want. So if you're not sure where the monster's going, just hold your charge, wait, and then throw in the right direction. For the second one, you can still angle it and do about a 45 degree angle, so very good for adjusting. So charge boomerangs are very good in that regard. You can also do a charge boomerang right after an attack or an evade if you can time the press right. So definitely get used to the timing frame of when you want to press A. 
because it allow you to be a lot more aggressive with the boomerangs. This is also great if you're aggressive with that lunge attack like I am. Because if you go and you do a normal boomerang, you can only jump in the direction that you threw it. But if you hold a charge, you can then adjust and then go straight in for a lunge with much more greater accuracy. Okay, there's a few more moves that we still have to cover. After you throw a second boomerang, if you press the A button, you'll go into my absolute favorite move, which is the boomerang melee combo. It's 26 melee damage and 8 uh, motion for range damage. So if you're using a balanced type prowler weapon, you'll be doing a lot of good damage. You can also go into the boomerang combo from the R and X downward slash like that. Sorry for the small glitch, let me do it again. So R and X and then A. And also you can do it after that forward lunge. So this is great. It allows you to completely reposition your cat while attacking the entire time. Sting does multiple hits, so it's also good for elemental. And of course you do have a jump attack, which is actually really powerful at 24 motion and 24 units for your skill gauge. And yes, you can mount monsters just as good as any hunter, as long as you're using that mounting attack. Don't try mounting it using the wheel or stuff like that. I've seen some people try to do that. That's not what you want to be doing. Okay, after you get hit enough times, your cat will go into a fury. When your cat is furious, it will get 30% affinity boost for a small amount of time. You'll dash faster and you'll get knockback protection, sort of like rock steady. So you also get earplugs, which is really nice. Press X and A and you'll start swiping and just keep pressing X and your cat will keep on swiping. You can change your direction during the swipe or you can press X and A to do a finisher. Ooh, I blew that there. Finishers are really fun and really great when you pull them off like this. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, now I definitely want to say this. You do not have to be spamming boomerangs to be a competitive prowler. When I mean competitive, I mean equal if not stronger than a normal hunter, which the prowlers definitely can be. However, you do need to mix some boomerangs into your routine, in my opinion, in order to do this. Now, there are two skills that you're going to definitely want, which is Pierce Boomerang and Big Boomerang. Pierce Boomerang, which I've already covered, allows you to do many more hits than a normal boomerang, which is really great for applying elemental damage to a monster, and the Big Boomerang stacks with it, which allows you to hit your target easier and do even more damage as well. And both of those stack with the boomerang combo. So if you want to be using melee, that combo is really strong. The Pierce Boomerangs, if you look down in this chart below, you can see the difference between the motion value from the Big Boomerang only, the Pierce Boomerang only, and then what happens when you mix Big and Pierce together. Especially that Boomerang combo becomes very powerful and really gives meaning to some more close counter attacking, so you don't always have to be spamming Boomerangs. Let's take a quick look at the Boomerangs in action. So here's Piercing Boomerang. I definitely like activating it first before I do Big Boomerang. If you notice, now it's doing multiple hits. The first hit does 150% elemental damage, and the second and third hit do 50%. So overall, it's like hitting the monster twice with your element, which is really good. And then if you activate Big Boomerangs, it becomes even larger, so very easy to hit, and does more damage as well. Whoa, get out of the way. <laughs> These things last for 90 seconds apiece, so generally after your pierce is gone, you're going to want to then charge up and get ready to reactivate your big. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. So here is the big pierce. Look at that thing. The thing is huge and powerful. It has some really good weight to it as well. Now, in case you didn't know before a hunt, if you do eat for your attack up and you see this feline hurler, it actually does apply to felines as well. So this will increase all of your ranged attacks like boomerangs by an additional 10%. So definitely eat for this if you're going to be competitive or if you're leveling up your cat, sort to resistance and look for a meal that gives feline trainer. This will give you and any Palicos that you're with 150% experience points. So if you do this, you'll level up your cat much faster, and when you level up, you become more stronger. If you start from a level 20 cat and you do level 10 Dead Eye Garuga, and you eat for trainer every time, it only takes 17 hunts to max out to level 50, so two very good skills. Also make sure that you keep your power charms and power talons. These things do affect cats, so having these in your pouch will make you stronger. You can buy the charms at the shops and the talons. After you get far enough to get a Devil Joe Talon, you can then combine it with a charm to make that special item. Also, two very good skills is Emergency Retreat, which you just see. It will make you immediately invincible, throw you in the ground, cure all your status ailments, and give you a potion heal. So it's pretty darn amazing. Sumo Stomp is also great, makes you completely invincible, 
and it keeps your weapon out. So this is what you want to use if you want to retreat, but you don't want to sheath your weapon and you don't really care about healing. So these are just two very good skills that are not exactly necessary, but definitely I think will see you performing better. One final note, cutting type weapons will do cutting damage, so you can cut off tails with ease. And if your weapon has a hammer icon, it's a blunt type, and any hit that you do to the face, boomerang, or melee will do KO and stun damage. So you will exhaust monsters, and you kind of knock them out. Nothing feels better than knocking out a big monster with a cat. And now for some fun, here is just what happens when you have four people who know how to use Prowler, all teaming up against a hyper monster. Hyper monsters have a part on their body that is glowing, that does more damage. However, if you hit that spot, you'll gain a lot more hunter art. <laughs> Whoops. Now, when this is good for a hunter, this is amazing for a cat. Because if you can hit that spot, the amount that your gauge goes up is absolutely ridiculous. This allows you to spam traps, different skills, and just have a really, really fun time. So... I, honestly, my favorite thing to do in this game is to fight hyper monsters with a prowler. It's so much fun. Also good for learning how to aim because you definitely want to be hitting that sweet spot. So here I'm using the uh, hyper Najarala weapon. It's blunt and it does um, paralysis. Not a whole lot, but enough to cause at least one paralysis per hunt, perhaps two. And the cats and everybody's just going ham. For this hunt, I'm using Poogie P, which is my assist cat, so it gets additional bonus for using boomerangs, and it has traps. So if you have managed to gotten this cat from some of the sharing that we've done, make sure that you teach it Pierce Boomerang from another cat, and then it'll be ready to go. <laughs> if you see here, I really like using that boomerang melee combo. It allows me to make sure that I'm hitting the head. It does a lot of damage as well, um, and it's just really fun to use. So I've been playing a lot of traps just because it's more damage. Now, you, I, we weren't ready to capture this monster quite yet, but if you press A with your weapon uh, put away, you will get Trank Bombs here. So you can capture any monster without worrying about bringing items with you as long as you can activate a trap. Very cool. <laughs> this poor Shogun, look at this stuff, man. It's just an array of hits. He's getting poisoned, he got paralysis, he got KO'd. Oh, this poor thing. <laughs> so much fun. We were doing hyper monsters this night, the four of us. And no matter which monster we were doing, the, mon the hunts were done in like three minutes every time. Didn't matter what we were against. It was so much fun. Now, guarding with a cat is actually really good. So if you notice a case like this, go ahead and guard if you think you're going to get hit. It's like a hunter. You're not going to lose a whole lot of damage or life. And if you're using a protect cat, you won't take any damage from small to medium hits. It's crazy. This is funny, I think we have like two traps here. Here's a sleep bomb. <laughs> the bombs for the cats do knock all the hunters away, so make sure that you're away if you're throwing one or someone else's. Um, it was ready to capture, but I think we killed it before it even got into this trap. <laughs> There's the KO. Now I admit I was a little spammy on the boomerangs for this hunt, which is fine, um, but you can do a lot of melee focus attacks if you're using that R and X attack and the boomerang combo. Um, just don't let anybody tell you how you should and shouldn't play a Prowler, but I am recommending that you at least consider how to use the boomerangs correctly because that melee attack is very good, and of course the boomerangs themselves are stupidly powerful. Woohoo! Good hunt! Okay, well, I hope you guys check out, I have a lot of other guides on the Prowler. I have a guide on how to scout them, how the villages work, the percentage chance of getting the skills that you want, um, the good armor skills that you want to get, and I even have a video that covers all the different skills, their motion values, and effects. So I hope you guys check out Prowler. It's a fantastic weapon in Monster Generations, and definitely worth a shot. Until next time, happy hunting.